All right, this is going to be a little bit complicated, so strap in, because today we're going to implement pathfinding. This one took quite a bit of bug fixing and messing around to make, so pay close attention if you haven't worked with A-Star before. We obviously need pathfinding in our game, because our colonists are going to need to be able to move to and from their tasks on their own, and we don't want them to try walking through walls or anything like that. Instead of using Godot's built-in pathfinding, we're going to use A-Star, because it's really good for grid-based pathfinding, and in my opinion, it's probably the best pathfinding algorithm there is. The first thing we're going to do for this is make a node to handle our pathfinding for us, and we're going to make it a child of our grid. Give this a script, and let's get started. First thing, let's give it a class name for that juicy autocomplete. Next up are some references that we'll need. We'll need to create a new A star node in the script, like this, and we'll also grab some references to our made node and our grid node. On top of that, we'll add the directions that we want to be able to pathfind in. If you want to add in diagonal movement, go ahead and add those directions here too. For the A star node to work, we basically need to assign all pathfindable locations an ID and connect them to each other. A star uses the IDs and connections between points to create a path. We'll assign every single grid position an ID and initially connect all of them, but we'll disconnect any points that are not supposed to be traversable, like walls or trees. We're going to make a few functions to assign the IDs and connect these points. The first is going to be the function add points, which loops through every point in the grid and gives each one an ID, one after the other. Keep in mind that this is adding the world position as a point for A star, not the grid position. We'll also need a few helper functions. The first one we're going to make is going to be get point ID. This function will take a grid position as a parameter and return the nearest A star point ID to the actual world position corresponding to that grid position. Next will be get world ID, which does essentially the same thing but with world coordinates. I know A star has this built in already, but I just like having these both in the Pathfinder script with the same naming convention. The last two helpers here are going to be get ID world pause, which returns the world coordinates of a point ID and get ID grid pause, which does the same thing but returns the grid coordinates instead of the world coordinates. Now that we've got our helper functions, we can make our functions to connect the points to each other. Make a function called connect point, and we'll give it a vector to point as a parameter. This function will get the ID of the point, then loop through all of its neighbors, check to see if they're valid and unoccupied, and if they are, it'll connect them to the point. We'd call this function on a grid point if we just deconstructed a wall there, for example. Next, we also want to be able to disconnect our points as needed, like when we build a wall or a tree grows. For this, supply a point, and we're essentially going to do the same thing, except we'll disconnect this point from all of its neighbors instead of connect it. Since the connect point function only works for a single point, we're going to make a connect all points function that'll loop through every point in the grid and connect them. Now we have all the functions that we need to pathfind, so make an initialize function that first adds all the points and then connects all of them using the functions that we made. Now the cherry on top is the get path function, where we'll supply a grid point for the start and a grid point for the end. We'll get the point IDs of both of these, and then we'll let A star run its magic and give us a path made of world coordinates from point A to point B. Here's some screenshots of the entire script. Make sure to head over to the main script and call the initialize function or else nothing will work. Last thing to do is head over to our unit script and add some way to verify that it's working. Make sure to add a reference to the Pathfinder node in the unit script, and then we'll just add an on-click input event that gets the grid position that you just clicked on, and calls the Pathfinder node to give us a path from where we're currently at to the grid position that we just clicked on. Now if we run it and you click on a grid position, you'll see that our unit is able to make paths on its own. And that's it for this tutorial. Next up, we'll either be switching the current cell data system over to a tile map because I'm starting to slightly regret not using it because of auto tiles and stuff, or we might start working on something else. Either way, I'll catch you for the next one.